Hello and welcome to Teach to Learn, the channel in which I teach concepts so you can learn them and I can better understand them. Right now we're going to be learning how to create strings using template literals in JavaScript. So let's dive right in. A new feature of ES6 is the template literal. This is a special type of string that makes creating complex strings easier. Template literals allow you to create multi-line strings and to use string interpolation features to create strings. Then we are told to consider the code below in which variable person has been declared with the const keyword and been assigned an object with two properties. Our first is name and our second is age. Our name property contains a string value of Zodiac Hasbro and age simply contains a number value of 56. So we have this person's name and age. Then we have the following code right here in which variable greeting has been declared with the const keyword and been assigned a string value. But as you might be able to tell, this is a different type of string than the ones we might be used to because this one uses backticks instead of regular single or double quotes. And it is also using this special syntax right here with the dollar sign and curly braces in which a property of an object is being accessed. So in this case, name, the name property, referring to the person object has been accessed and added to our string, similar to string concatenation, but using this special syntax right here. And it is also being used right here to access another property within the same object, which is age. Then this is simply logged into the console. And they say the console will display the strings. Hello, my name is Zodiac Hasbro, and I am 56 years old. A lot of things happen there. Firstly, the example uses backticks, as I've explained before, not single or double quotes to wrap the string. Secondly, notice that the string is multi-line, both in the code and the output. We can see that it is multi-line right here. Let's paste that very quickly, this code into our code editor. So you can appreciate that it is multi-line in our output as well. Here you can see, hello, my name is Zodiac Hasbro, and I am 56 years old in separate lines. This saves inserting backslash n or new line within strings. The dollar sign uh, curly braces with the variable inside, so this syntax right here, is a placeholder. Basically, you won't have to use concatenation with the plus operator anymore, as we talked about before. To add variables to strings, you just drop the variable in a template string, which is simply a string that uses backticks, and wrap it with the dollar sign and curly braces. So you just slap those on right, right there, and you won't have to use concatenation. Similarly, you can include other expressions in your string literal. For example, dollar sign, curly braces, and then A plus B. This new way of creating strings gives you more flexibility to create robust strings. So as they mentioned right here, you can also do calculations within your strings. So you can include expressions. So let's do a very, very, very simple example. So console log, let's use a template string. And let's say two plus two is dollar sign. And let's put two plus two, excuse me, two plus two here is that much. So what do we get in our console? We get that two plus two is four through our special syntax right here. So we had the characters two plus two, and then we use our special syntax and we included an expression inside. So we get our final result of two plus two is, and then a number value of four. Just did that to show you um, what they explained right here. So now let's reset all of our code and move on to the challenge. And we are tasked with using template literal syntax with backticks, remember the backticks, to create an array of list elements or li strings. Each list element's text should be one of the array elements from the failure property on the result object 
and have a class attribute with the text warning. The make list function should return the array of list item strings. So if you've done a little bit of HTML or CSS, you should know all about li tags and what their use is. And then they tell us use an iterator method, any kind of loop to get the desired output, which is shown below. So we need to do this right here. We need to get an array with these contents right here. And before we do anything, let's just check out the code we are given beforehand. So we here we have a result being declared with the const keyword. This is an object which contains three properties, success, failure, and skipped. Each of these properties contains an array with three string values inside, as you can see right here. But for this challenge, we want to focus on the failure property. Then we have a function called make list, which as a parameter currently holds a RR, meaning that an array will be passed into this function. And then we have our failure items variable declared with the const keyword and being assigned an empty array. So our failure items property contains an empty array at this moment. And then our function returns our failure items variable to us. This is what our function currently does. And then we have lastly, our last line of code, our failures list variable declared with the const keyword and being assigned our function call with the result dot failure array. So at the end of the day, we should get a variable called failures list, which contains this array right here and is made through accessing this failure property right here and pushing each of these values into, oh, excuse me about that. Each of those values into our array containing li tags. So how do we do that? Well, we have our function right here called make list, which will take in an array. And we have that our failure items variable has been declared with the const keyword and been assigned an empty array. So we need to push the values of our failure array into our failure items array, but they need to include li tags. Let's use our special syntax for that. We need a for loop initially. So for let our variable i equal one equal let i, excuse me, equals zero. And as long as i is less than our array's length, then we can go ahead and increase our i variable by one. So now let's type in side of our block of code. So what do we need to do for each iteration? Well, we need to access our failures, failure items property which is our empty array. And we need to push the following inside of it. So push, then we open a new template string. Remember, use the back ticks for this. And we need to open our first li tag. So li class, then each one of these elements should include the class of text warning. Warning. And then we add our second set of double quotes. Can't forget about those. And within our tags, we simply use our special syntax. So dollar sign curly brace. And we need to push the, the string value at whichever one of the positions our loop is currently at. So we need to do the following. We need to access our failure, excuse me, our result object, and then our failure property at position i for each iteration of our for loop. And then we can go ahead and close our curly braces and set our final li tag. Remember, these tags need to be closed. And I believe our function is now done. Let's log our failures list variable into the console. So failure list. <laughs> and as you can see, 
we get an array that is exactly like the one shown in the lesson. So we've successfully pushed values of an array contained inside of a property within an object into a new array and added li tags as well on top of that. So we've successfully learned how to create strings using template literals, which are the ones that use backticks. Thank you so much for watching. This has been your bearded coding friend, Teach to Learn, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice one.